I think it's about time we get this machine making some chips. Don't get me wrong, there's still a ton of things that need to be done, but at least we can get the spindle doing its thing. We're replacing the stock single phase motor with the two and a half horsepower three phase motor, mostly so we can get better control over its speed and torque. This one goes about 3600 RPM, but I want at least double that, so we're gonna go ahead and belt drive the thing. We could use the gears that came with the machine, but what's the fun in that? For today's video, we're gonna make the motor mount and the pulleys, which means we're also gonna have to make a few tools and figure out a way to cut splines to match the spindle drive. Per the usual, we're just gonna jump right in, make it up as we go along. Ah, dodge the chips. All right, here you can see we're machining a hexagon shape into the boss of the pulleys. This will help us later in registering the location of the splines we need to cut. Speaking of those splines, I guess I need to figure out how we're actually gonna do that.
All right, so broaching seems like the obvious answer for the splines. There is at least one problem with this. Mainly, I've never done it before. And we're gonna have to do some brazing to make a tool for that, which I've only done once. Armchair machinists, now's your chance to tell us we're doing it wrong. And the second problem with this is I'm lazy. I don't wanna use the manual mill, but in order to use our half-finished CNC, we're gonna need to make a spindle lock. That's what you see here. It's a simple design, and we'll have the plans up on our website. Link in the underwear.
All right, the last thing we need to take care of are the spindle bearings. The taper bearings that came with this machine are just fine for a few thousand RPMs, but if you want 8,000, you're gonna need to change them out for these angular contact bearings. Link in the undercarriage. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. Uh, Dakota asks, so you printed some parts for a 3D printer on that. What is your experience making parts that are dimensionally accurate? That's a good question. Uh, Dakota is talking about the Photon and Photon S printers we've been printing with a lot lately. The thing about resin printers is they have actually kind of a little bit of a bleed uh, because they use light to cure the resin. Sometimes that light gets to part of the resin that shouldn't be cured. Uh, it's really a small amount, and if you can adjust for it in your model, you can do things like this. MK3424 says, uh, my Photon S has the yellow windows. I'm guessing that you have an older version? That's interesting. I've seen a few comments on this, and I guess we probably did get one of the first versions, and they have since changed them out for the yellow windows, so maybe we can upgrade ours to that. That would be cool. Uh, Anders asks, have you seen this monster CNC? And links to a YouTube. Uh, I had not. It looks super awesome. And he's doing like the whole thing out of epoxy granite and all that. Very, very clean. Yeah. Uh, looks super strong too. Link in the thing? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Nate says, one of those unicorns was not like the other. Uh, Joshua asks, could you use linear encoders, aka DRO scales, as feedback for your CNC? You could, although there's not much point because our motors have really good rotary encoders in them that are super duper accurate. But we do want to do a video about kind of hacking all the different kinds of linear encoders to use for other purposes. Yeah, subscribe. Mac Delight says, hi, I'd like a unicorn shirt. My body type doesn't fit traditional sizes. Mm -hmm. So please print it on one of those tents they use when they fumigate houses. Uh, can, can we just send you a sticker maybe? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, if you've made it this far in the video, you probably deserve to see this thing actually make some chips. So, here you go.